back to Testopia. So, uh, for this episode, I am going to try something a little bit different. So, um, I'm going to try uh, to use some of the uh, yeah, some of the routine that I had developed when yeah doing my Minecraft uh, things. So, um, yeah. So the format I developed there is that I do an intro, then I do some in between uh, shots that I show the partial progress, and then the final result. So you will see me from uh, right now. I just have to do my research on the feature I'm working on, all the way to when I feel the feature is finished enough for yeah making an episode. Maybe I'll make some modification to that later, but that's how I do it for now. So, um, yeah. Let's uh, get on with this. Yeah. So, uh, first off, I have succeeded in getting uh, Testopia on GitHub. So, uh, yeah. Got it set up on a private repository. So... Yeah, that is uh, what we agreed on, having it on a private. Yeah, just so we don't get any issues with uh, people snooping around, around on uh, GitHub for free code to steal. <laughs> yeah. But, um, for what um, I'm going to work on for this episode, uh, there's a type of feature that uh, I really feel that would make things a little bit easier when I'm testing new features and or debugging a game. And that is the ability to write some uh, quick test code in game and just run it right away. So that is what uh, I'm going to try to implement. So uh, yeah. We are going to write some code, and uh, I have done some research. If I open up the uh, wiki page here, we see this piece of code here. Now I am pretty sure this, yeah it says right here, it's used for writing a message in mail item and giving it a Pokemon. Yeah, that's, that is the code uh, feature I'm going to use for this. I'm writing my new thing here. So I'm going to use this uh, code here and modify the parameters and then uh, see if I can get out of this. So, yeah. I'm going to open up um, the internal script editor here. Right now, all you see is uh, empty code and I'm gonna enter in here new code thing yeah new code thing just so I had something in here yeah right I'm just gonna leave this open and um, right following the same way I do things in uh, my Minecraft episodes, which I should try not to mention too many times. Uh, I mean, um, I do want to promote it, but it feels a bit wrong since uh, it's a personal thing, personal project. That has really nothing to do with the genders and zero, so... Uh, should I feel guilty for trying to promote it? Ah, either way. <laughs> I guess we hope to TBC to judge whether that is worth it or not. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, the way we the way I am going to do this is that um going to run a transition effect uh, right here. And in a couple of seconds you will see um, I am back and what for me will probably uh, a few minutes to maybe an hour. I got some results here. Made some code. So, uh, yeah. 
see you in a little while. <sighs> okay, so uh, I am back and I feel kind of defeated. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that should be like that. Yeah. So uh, I tried a lot of things. I yeah. Also, well, <laughs> getting the uh, getting the um, message uh, thing here to start up, so I could type in uh, the code right away. That I got that working without any problem. I could run any code I wanted straight away. But the problem started to rise when I tried to implement some sort of error catching. So when I ran the uh, typical uh, Ruby begin, rescue and end uh, routine for to just make sure that uh, I get something out of this uh, test code running, it failed. I could not catch the error. And it went straight ahead to just crash the game whenever I typed anything that wasn't valid code in uh, yeah, the code testing field. But outside of that, yeah, uh, this feature works. Oh, uh, I forgot to turn off the sound there. Don't want any echoes. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, as you can see, I can just uh, enter some code here, print hello world, and this will show up. Hello world. Print. Yeah. Hello YouTube. <laughs> and we'll say hello YouTube. And uh, yeah. Uh, anything more complicated I can come up with? Huh, let me... Let me think. What could I... Uh, ah, can't, can, can't come up with anything more exciting right now. So... Probably a lot of things I could do, but I can't interact with anything here to grab some code to just copy and so, yeah. But yeah, I got the boost to uh, run some code for me, which uh, would come in nicely if I need to run something uh, that's not covered in the uh, debug thing. And that's the uh, next step. That is to... Uh, Get this um, feature to build to this list of uh, de debug options. I think uh, maybe add it, um, yeah, as the third option there. Yeah, do some code or something. So yeah, going to find the debug menu. Uh, where was that? Uh, debug right here, I think. <laughs> now where's that list? Uh, here it is. Yeah, going to add my uh, thing into this uh, list of com debug commands and um, yeah. I'll be back in a couple seconds and I've added this. And I am back. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this uh, seven lines long uh, code there may not look like much, but uh, for now, that's what I just had to do. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, first off, um, some mistake happened uh, during the last recording. Some of the uh, screen recording froze and should be doing fine now. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, the previous recording just failed, so I'm kind of reconstructing it right now. <laughs> Since I didn't know this and just moved on from, from that, so yeah, I'll just get right on. <laughs> so, um, to summarize what uh, happened, um, first off, I need to make sure that this headset is gone put into the computer so I don't get any echoes since I'm recording the audio from the game while also recording from this nice microphone <laughs> yeah okay so uh, if I walk to this booth here I can talk to it and it will ask me to write some test code Writing it in print hello world will oh. print hello world in a dialog box. And I can write anything I want. Yeah. So with that I can do any kind of uh, coding thing I can think of. And if I want to have multiple codes or multiple lines of code, I can just separate them with semicolon. Oops. Uh, print. Goodbye world. That should work. Hello world. Goodbye world. Yeah. However, uh, when I writing something that's uh, going to fail, let's see if I try something like will dot fail, which is more than likely invalid because yeah, there's no object called fail. No, there's no object called will, and said non-existent object does not does not have a common co component called fail. So. This will crash the game. Now I tried to implant some um, error catching for this, but uh, it seemed to not work since uh, yeah, the error is caught at a higher level when it comes with the runtime error. And uh, when I'm trying to catch the error, I done this level. And somehow the lower level when I try to catch an error uh, is uh, ignored, just caught at the high level, which is uh, wrong, just in highly intuitive. But it's the way it is. So when I type anything bad in, it will just crash the game, which, uh, well, that's better than the way it was before, I suppose. Now, yeah, maybe I'll find some way to fix it. Now the um, yeah, that pretty much summarizes what I was uh, trying to say in the previous clip, which was uh, well corrupted in some way. <laughs> and and the thing I just did now is uh, add this thing here into the uh, debug menu, which you find right here. So uh, this is the um, menu list that you find when uh, either me or TBC goes into the debug menu and well plays with that. All the uh, options we can choose, which is quite a bit. Yeah, and I add in my own here on the list, right under switches and variables. So uh, yeah. Here's where I added it to the list and yeah, implemented it uh, right there. Yeah. So when I go into um, into debug now, right, debug. And run a line of code. 
I can print hello world and add in print me. <laughs> It'll print those things. But if I try to print anything uh, that would, would crash the game. Let's see. Santa dot is real. <laughs> yeah. But here I'll just get a name error, which uh, make me wonder. Maybe I can catch the uh, error and, uh, after all. Hmm. I need to look into that. And uh, I would need to expand the number of um, characters I can write in the code because right now I'm still limited to just uh, 256, but that should be very easy to fix. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's see how many characters I can add in and if it. Yeah, it continues on, which is. That's nice. Yeah, I can write a lot with this. Yeah, maybe I don't... Oh! Where did it go? Uh, yeah, that's the limit. Well, that's uh, plenty, but I would like more. <laughs> so yeah, that's a bit of progress, and um, yeah, I guess I can just delete this uh, event now that I got it uh, in the debug menu. Right. Uh, I go back into uh, the test menu here, and uh, it's still on bugs here. Right, it's still recording fine. Yeah, just to make sure, so it, yeah, don't get the same fate as the last recording. Yeah, and uh, I will be back in a couple of seconds. Well, from your perspective at least, when I have uh, done some more development here. Yeah. So uh, this didn't take too long to uh, to fix. <laughs> uh, I just uh, reinserted my uh, earlier begin and rescue codes, which I removed because they didn't really do anything when uh, the code ran from an event. But now that they run from uh, proper code, yeah, not any real problem. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, test this out. So, maybe we should go through the code first. I believe I've already gone through this. I'm just gonna remove the default code here because I want blank slate every time. Uh, yeah, and I have increased the limit to 9,999 characters. I highly doubt I'll need uh, that much, but uh, in case I were to, uh, in case I would need to uh, write some long uh, uh, algorithm, well, moderately sized algorithm inside uh, <laughs> that small text box to temporarily run, which uh, I suppose would be a really dumb thing to do, but well, it could happen. I could need it, so yeah. Got a limit of 9,999. Should ever need it. Could probably increase it even more. But uh, if I ever need to write in 99,000 characters uh, just for something, some quick test, or 99,000, I'm just gonna leave it at 9,999. No. 9,999. Can't even speak today.
<laughs> right. Um, yeah. This uh, tag here begin begins any code that well just tells the um, interpreter that uh, any code that's within this area might crash the whole thing. So it checks to make sure. If it does crash it, it will just re cancel it and run this instead. Tell me, say what. Yeah, it saves the error to this uh, variable here, and then just prints it to screen with that dialog box. So uh, tells me what is wrong. Now I have already tested this, so um, yeah, I know this works. Gonna start this up and um, we'll go into debug mode where I have this right here and yeah, gonna do print anything and huh, what happened? I oh, should have done something. Print. Print something? Yeah, do it again. Must have done something wrong. Yeah, it printed something. And of course I can have um, multiple code lines of code with just using a semicolon. Hmm. And if I were to write something that uh, would go otherwise cause a crash, say uh <laughs> uh, oh, caps lock. Santa dot is real. <laughs> yeah, Santa is real. Oh no, it couldn't find Santa. <laughs> yeah, so double check that this. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, just have to double check that OBS capture stuff because. Uh, yeah, because of that uh, one uh, clip that just, yeah, got bad. <laughs> yeah, the, this works, but I want to go one step further. I want to implement a hotkey to open up that uh, line to type stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, the next step. Making a hotkey. It, to work just in debug mode, of course. So yeah, I will see you in a little while while I figure out how to do that. Now, how do I go do the... Yeah, just leave it there to do the transition. Okay, see you in a little bit. And I am back. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, successfully made some sort of hotkey. Now I realize that uh, there aren't that many keys available for me to use for this, so uh, I decided to go with a uh, key combination. So when I type Control Alt F6, it will open up this. So uh, yeah, it works. So, uh, I think I saw something weird about this earlier. Let's see. Will dot crash and. Yeah, it just freeze. That's really odd. Oh, dead, dead game. <laughs> I guess I had to complete doing something. Uh, I think I know why, why this is. Um, it had to uh, complete some uh, other task in the loop. I attached this to the uh, regular loop in the um, yeah in the maps update. So uh. yeah, but yeah, now I got a hotkey, and uh, I tried to implement it in battle as well. So. Um, uh, if everything goes as planned, it should work. Although, 
uh, I tested it earlier and it uh, I did get it to work right then, but I could try again now. Let's test a void battle. Yeah, just a low volume above us though, because that's the uh, top on the list. Let's see if I can uh, activate this hotkey. No, it doesn't doesn't react. No, maybe I coded it wrong. Oh, well, let's uh, have fun uh, killing this above now. But uh, yeah, at least I got the hotkey in for uh, for the overworld. So oh, right now yeah, I'm back to the debug menu. All right, so so um yeah, at least I got this hotkey. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah, uh, with that, this yeah. With that, I'm going to end this uh, dystopia episode. So, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, any comments are welcome. Uh, I do take criticism for how I make these uh, episodes, so um, don't be shy about replying, well, commenting. <laughs> uh, just start a discussion. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not. Uh, like the regular um, features that I work on, since most of them have just been functional for TBC to use. But uh, yeah, this is a little bit different. Yeah, uh, if you got anything to say, just put it in the comments, and yeah, one of us will, will reply to it. <laughs> and yeah. I guess that's it. So, um, again, thank you for watching and uh, see you later. Quagram out. <laughs>